to drive themselves to flower board. And in a couple of months, they fulfill themselves in their teeth and die away. So too, man must yield his place for his children to flourish. These words, ladies and gentlemen, indicate that not only were these that there were many reincarnations in the past, but the soul shall continue to incarnate, to manifest in numberless incarnations in the future also. The present life in this form is only an incident in the eternal existence of soul. In that mantra, Vayu Anilam Amritam, the soul is called Amritam means immortal. The soul does not die. Generation after generation come upon the earth, feed themselves and grow to maturity and feed their kind and then die away, yielding their place to the new crowd of the latest generation. Yet, ladies and gentlemen, is always thought of as a tragic incident and it appears to be so also. We lament, we weep, we grieve and over our departed we express sympathy towards the bereaved relatives but to those who are much wiser, much more advanced in wisdom, death is only one of the incidents in the eternal existence of soul. Death is an institution of knowledge. We do not know of anyone who was born and did not die. In the Gita it says, Jatas Kyahi Dhruva Mrityu Dhruva Janma Mrityascha Tasmata Pariharya Arte Nanuto Janti Pandita It says one who is born must die and one who dies must be again born. This is what Sri Krishna tells Arjuna. Such is the eternal cycle of birth and death. Therefore, the wise grieve not the word Pandita. Pandita is the wise. Grieve not for the The tradition of birth and death continues until the soul attains emancipation. The scripture continues to remind us Gaiti Karni Vaiti Bharni Whatever you sow that Shall you reap? If you sow sour figs, you cannot hope to reap sweet mangoes. Therefore, the bhajan says, Jokal karna hai, 
आज कर लो जो आज करना है तो अब कर मीनिंग दैट वट एवर यू हैव टू डू टूमारो ट्राई टू डू इट टू डे डोंट वेट अंटिल टूमारो वट एवर यू हैव टू डू टू डे डू इट नाउ फॉर नो वन नोज वेन दिस बर्ड So is called Suparna, a bird, beautiful winged bird. No one knows when it will sneak out this cage, and then it will be too late. If I knew, I would have done so and so and so. A great poet, uh, Tagore, says. That that lovely song that I came to sing, that song I was unable to sing. That beautiful music which I came to play, that music I was unable to play. For I was too busy. I was busily engaged. in untangling the tangled cord of my sitar of my music of my instrument i spent most of my time allotted to me in harmonizing my voice with the music with the drum and the other instrument and i am not yet ready to sing the song I was given two hours. In this way, two hours passed. The time given to me expired, and the curtain was drawn, and the audience was still seated here, and I was only able to sing my song because only two hours was given to me. I was reading. Um. In one Om Prakash Tyagi book, Vedic Dharma, he says that a man makes a cage and he puts a bird into the cage. But the cage has one door. But you have to keep that door, that gate, closed all the time. If you make one little mistake and leave the door open a little. the bird will just fly away he said but god is so great that he has made this cage in which this bird is living and this cage has nine doors and all open there is no closure and yet this soul this bird will not sneak out of this cage until the right time comes so our lesson here is that we have to prepare ourselves for that particular time when i am ready to leave this cage this is the regular story of life as a spider spreads its web many flies got caught into it so too i was caught in this web of my own thoughts my own worries my own anxieties therefore i had no time whatsoever to do what i came to do i have assumed this human body which is the greatest gift of god why it is the greatest gift because only through the human body the soul can attain salvation not through any other body chaurasi lakh yoni jeev bhramate ya jeev avinashi 
this eternal soul, this immortal soul, visits Chaurasi lot yogi. Chaurasi lot means 100,584. 100, Multiply that. And that amount of body, species, exists on earth. And this soul attends to all those bodies. It enters all those bodies according to karma. I have assumed this human body to create for myself a good future destiny. But I was too busy in the hoarding, money-making race, the banking account is raising as soon as it goes down, you start to become worried. Uh, you work, you work, you do anything. I failed miserably, he says. I failed miserably to improve myself. In this world, let alone the next world, we must be talking about. And now the end of my given journey has reached without any success. Kāda karma of Ishwarini mithya doshalagai and we start blaming Kal. Kal means time. Pandiji, I couldn't help doing what I am doing, you know, because it is Kalyu time. Kalyu make me do it. So we start blaming time now, the age. Karma. It's a, my destiny. God has written down here on my forehead and that has to happen. So I cannot help. I have to do what is written here, destiny. And then we blame God, say, it is God's desire. So we blame Kal, Karm and Ishwar. We blame these three for our misfortune. I always tell you that man is an architect of his own fate and he is the builder of his own future destiny. The way he thinks, the way he acts in this life, you can see from childhood, e kapita ke vipul kumara honi prithak gunashila achara. He says that one father has many sons, but each son is different to the other. And they came from the same parents, same mother and same father, but not two alike. They are different in nature. The result of our past is our present. If the present suffering are the result of the past wicked action, then to avoid suffering in a future life, a thoughtful man would decide, would desire not to do any more sin. A soul is born again and again under various conditions, under various circumstances. <coughs> we do not know that after death, in which country we will be, we will be born, in what race we will be born, we do not know this. Only Krishna says that Arjun you and I were born numberless times, but the difference is that I can remember all my births and you cannot remember yours. Why? Because the last verse in the last chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, it is explained there, Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Yatra Partha Dhanodhara. That Krishna was a Yogeshwara. He was a master yogi. 
He will say, a yogi knows past, present and future. And yet the Partha Dhanurdhara. Partha means Arjun. Arjun was an archer. He was not a yogi. Therefore, he couldn't remember his past. So a soul is born again and again under various conditions, various circumstances based upon the merit and demerit of his own actions, his own deeds, so that in every birth he may acquire a little more understanding and a little more detachment from this maya, from this illusion, from this holding money race business, and finally attains perfect knowledge and freedom which is called emancipation. Rebirth is the inevitable corollary that can explain, can safely explain the reasons for our embodiment or the soul's embodiment in this relative universe. The life of man is like a temporary pilgrimage and this so-called death is an end to all fortune that you inherit in this life. Nothing goes with you. We cannot take any material thing with us. Gayo Harishchandra Dadhiche Gayo Gayo Pratibena Sujata Magyanyo Harishchandra and many kings and emperors, sages and seers, they have left without taking any material thing with them. During this short pilgrimage of ours, man has been able to acquire many things. He has earned for himself material wealth, through honest means, also dishonest means. He has successfully acquired many honors, many certificates, many degrees and diplomas. These achievements are indeed commendable, nothing is wrong but only in the material plane where we are ready uh, to adore, to admire and appreciate the power of the intellect. I was told when I was in Trinidad um, that Eric Williams was the greatest speaker, orator, intellect, but he destroyed the country. I was told the greatest speaker, again, was Burnham. He destroyed the country. So the intellect alone without heart is nothing. Intellect and heart goes together. Then you can attain the height. But these achievements are not the only goal of man. In most cases, these academic achievements generally end in a good job. And that's the end of studies. Most men become very hearty um, and proud of their wealth and their learning, their education. They believe that this is the only goal in life. So let us work, let us eat, let us drink, let us marry and have a good time. For we only live once. Who knows what is going to happen after death? Man thinks that happiness lies in the gain of economics and the political domination. 
Therefore, he seeks his individual happiness, his individual fulfillment in earthly happiness. Because the thirst for happiness is a built-in urge which is natural to all living organisms, not only human beings. All beings, all creatures want to be happy. Therefore matter and money surround him on either side and then he drives through his surroundings and then they drive through him and so goes on his daily life to the last syllable of recorded turn. But my friend, a little quiet contemplation and self-inquiry can reveal to us that the outer objects of the senses do not contain what we are demanding, what we are searching for. So, we all know this. I know it, you know it, everybody knows this to be true. And yet all of us dissipate our energy in this futile mad quest all the time. We do not have time. Time. I'm very busy. Man has forgotten his own true nature because he thinks that he is this body. Hence he is not capable to understand the true value and purpose of this human soul, this human life. A man clings to the things that he understands contain happiness for him. Take for instance a murderer expects joy for himself after killing his enemies. And somebody believes that happiness lies in a bottle. A devotee of God finds happiness. You find your happiness in coming to satsang, in doing havan, in praying to God, meditation. And the poor man finds joy in searching for crumbs in the waste basket. All the rich man, the powerful man seek his happiness in the gain of economic and political domination. All are seeking their individual fulfillment in happiness. We all want to be happy. But the basic truth is that the world, this world in which we are living, is governed not by chance, not by accident, but by the rational control of the Creator Divine. Therefore man can begin his grasp of the essential truth of God's government of the world and gradually leads himself from darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge and this is why we pray. All say after me, Om, Om. Asatoma, Asatoma. Satgamaya, Tamasoma, Yotirgamaya, Mrityurma, Amritam Gamaya. <coughs> Lead me, O Lord, from untruth to truth, from darkness of ignorance. Darkness of to the light of knowledge, light of knowledge. And, from and from death to immortal life. Immortal life. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.